that we've roughed this down, we're going to switch over to a high speed steel here and, uh, and, and start getting it down. We're going to let the temperature drop down a little bit. And uh, we're still like 80 thousandths oversized. I just want to set up our tool pressures and everything else for the high speed with a couple cuts. Making sure that it's all uniform. Okay, we found that uh, acetone uh, cleans up that cosmoline uh, type material. We tried engine degreaser and I, you know, I had to laugh because engine degreaser wouldn't even touch that stuff. Um, but uh, the acetone uh, did a good job. And then uh, we took and we set up a, a brand new fine uh, uh, grit uh, flapper. Just went through it just to gloss the surfaces. Okay, and we're sitting here and we can, it's like see it'll slide on just slightly and uh, and we can see that it is uh, touching you know on those two sides there and just just starting to go about oh a quarter inch maybe so we're getting we're getting real close and I'm measuring the diameter here now and we're one inch nine eighty seven and seven tenths or so 989 a little bit of a taper there so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw a file just a little bit more draw a file polish draw a file polish and we're gonna get that to just barely slide on I think we finally got it here. I've got a nice fit and this uh, lightly falls on each side. Alright so and, and also too there's no rock. It feels good. Alright this is a this side here is aligned with this so we're just going to polish that up a little bit and uh, we need to kiss off that chamfer right there. And we're going to part this off a little wide, then we can go put it in the south bin and face it off to the exact width. And then we'll be setting it up in the dividing head and boring this. And then setting it, leaving it set up in there. And we're going to run our jumping jack in the uh, H, uh, K and T uh, 2HL. And we're going to actually broach that in with the uh, Kearney and Trekker. From here on out, we're going to use some kind of aluminum shim to buffer or soften the grip of the jaws, whether it be in the lathe or the super spacer where it's going to be going next. All right, and we're uh, we're tight. We left enough room behind here because what we're doing is we're facing this off, and we need to know what length this is and how much we need to take. And we're going to set the uh, th the stop on the lathe here and adjust our our cuts in. All right, so. 
Uh, we've already got it in here. It's running nice and true and ready to start cutting. Now we need to get in here. We need to actually get a surface touch here. All right. Now we'll bring in the clamp. Okay, we bring in our clamp, the uh, thimble here, uh, it gives us adjustments. And we're just going to go ahead and take 10 here. This lathe is pretty old and I haven't really fit the bearings in the headstock yet, so you, you give it quite a bit, you're going to chatter on you. We only got about 50,000, maybe 40, 50,000 to come off of this face here and then put a little chamfer on there. And then we're ready to go set it up in the mill. We're going to set it up in the bridge port first. Then we're going to set it up in the uh, K&T. Now we're going to be using the dividing head and the boring bar in the bridge port. And we're going to use the jumping jack or the slaughter head in the K&T. There's our first cut and our stop is set. And uh, using the mic, we don't have to move this back too far. The veneers should probably have to move it a little bit farther. Okay, so we're like at 541. And uh, the original one here is like 517. Try to get and try to get an area here where it was in the hammer ding. Yeah, 517. So I don't think you know, just slightly over an uh, inch and a half is gonna be fine, I believe. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take another 10. Okay, we're getting ready to set this up in the bridge port. And the main thing we're going to do in the bridge port is we want to put a bore in there that's going to be a press fit to the shaft. All right, and we're going to be able to locate this into this tool, this index head, and then leaving that in the index head, we're going to take it from this machine and we're going to move it to another machine. So our setup here needs to be done so that it's actually setting up for the future over on the other machine at the same time. All right, now we're going to set this up and I'm going to show you how to set this and clamp this down to the table, um, indicating it without any indicators or dials or anything else. All right, I got basically, we don't need the wrench there, uh, the two T-nut slots right here are free moving. All right, now we've wiped off the ways back here, which are straight in line, and this table and everything else mounts to that. So that's a machine surface in line with the machine squareness and everything else. So that's a precision surface. This index head has got a palm that it sets on when it's up in the 90 degrees, which this will be set up on the table on the next mill to locate the alignment for broaching the key in here. Because we're gonna we're gonna bring out a new tool that nobody's seen operate in this shop on the other machine. All right, so we'll crank this in, and we'll push the button and bring this in. Oh, we need to get a little bit of lubrication in there. Okay, we're getting close to the travel. All right, we're bringing this in so that we're setting that face against the ways face. Now we're also gonna stare down in here and we're, we're giving our slots center because we know that when you tighten up a bolt and the T-nut's not in the center of the slot, it can pull it to one side or the other. And we're going to be kind of stress-free right here. And there. The index head is mounted down to the table and is true in line with the axis of the palm. 
Now we just need to come out. We're going to put a coaxial indicator in here. We're going to go down and we're going to dial the bore here. Then we'll know where we are center. After that, we're going to go ahead and assemble this cam back on the old shaft. We're going to put it over in the lathe and we're going to read the run out on it. And we're going to decide how far off of the stroke. Uh, well, well, we'll know what the stroke is on it. But we'll know how far to go ahead and dial our, our table on over and create the hole that uh, we want in this part. All right, we got our coaxial indicator in here and we're locating down below the jaws and in a bore and it's good to dial it in there. Now I'm gonna t let you know a secret here. I have some ZEP 45, it could be any light, WD-40 or anything else. Go ahead and spray the area that you're gonna be spinning on, okay? Whether you have a cheap uh, indicator or expensive indicator, the, the natural design of it and the ball rubbing against the material itself limits the reading that you're going to get on any of these coaxial indicators. All right, now we got it spinning and of course um, I, I considered that uh, a line there for the speed that I'm going but you see how the needle will gauge in and out. I'm, I'm screwing the uh, axis in and out on the mill. All right, so we got we got that one lined right there. Now I grab the table and I'm going the opposite directions there, and I went past, and then you just get it you get it down to where you got the minimum movement of the needle. Now that's a line. All right, we've already planned that this is going to be the flat surface when when we remove this after doing this bore then this is going to turn and we're going to have a setting like this on the table okay so we got uh, we got a piece of key that's going to be supporting it underneath there when this closes down we just had this open because of the uh, coaxial indicator all right so basically what we're going to have we're going to have this part held up like this so we're going to come over straight over the distance of our crank uh, offset and we're going to bore that hole and then we're going to leave it right in there and we're going to go over the other machine. So let's get the piece in here. And here's our aluminum again. Because we don't want to put any chuck marks in our aluminum at all here. All right, and that uh, that piece of key stock there is going to support it when uh, we're doing the broaching on the keyways. Now let's go ahead and set this up in the lathe, and let's figure out what our offset is. We just got our eccentric just barely on the end of the shaft there, so that we could uh, uh, rotate it and and figure out uh, how much throw we got and uh, this travels a whole inch and about ten thousandths 